Do you love to garden, but the ground is getting to be too far away? Are you tired of weeding? Struggling with soil-borne diseases? Maybe you don't have good garden soil, or maybe even no soil at all. Would you like the advantages of raised bed gardening without the cost? Maybe you just want to try something new. Try straw bale gardening. Hello, this is Stephen from ShortSeasonGarden.com and I offer tips and tricks for gardening in any climate, but especially for short seasons like here in Zone 3 in Eastern Canada. So subscribe to my channel, give my video a thumbs up and a comment, and check me out on social media at Short Season Garden, on Facebook or Instagram, and you can also go to my website at www.shortseasongarden.com. If you're watching this video when it was first published, you're probably thinking, you can't plant a garden in Zone 3 in October. And of course you're right. But October is a great time to find straw bales to use next spring before they're all used up for animal bedding during the winter. I certainly didn't invent straw bale gardening. The credit for that goes to Joel Karsten, a horticulturist who happened to have poor soil at his place of residence. He details his story and explains the process in his book, Straw Bale Gardens. You see, the best growing medium for plants is organic material, and the fastest way to produce organic material is through composting. If you've watched my video on winter composting, you'll recall that the four necessary ingredients for compost are carbon, nitrogen, water, and oxygen. Again, if you're a composter, you know that straw is very high in carbon content. Joel found that by taking straw bales and adding generous amounts of fertilizer with a high nitrogen content, together with copious amounts of water, he could rapidly compost the interior of the bales. You can easily find lawn fertilizer with a high first number, which indicates the nitrogen content. If you prefer organic methods, you may want to use blood meal, which is also high in nitrogen. In his book, Joel gives detailed instructions for the conditioning of the bales, including what to expect each day in terms of internal bale temperature, mushrooms that appear as part of the composting process, and other details. Basically, you start by adding a half cup of high nitrogen fertilizer per bale. Then you need to water the bale to saturation. The second day, water the bale to saturation without adding fertilizer. Continue this process for 11 days, fertilizing every other day and watering every day. Since you want the bale to heat, warm water is best. On day 10, use the balanced fertilizer to supply some of the other nutrients your plants will need. On day 12, your bales should be ready to plant. Like any raised bed garden or container garden, a straw bale garden will require regular irrigation. Unless you plan to physically water each day with a watering can or hose wand, you will want to install a soaker, soaker hose or drip system before you plant. Once the bales are fully conditioned and ready for planting, each bale needs about one gallon of water daily. If you want to automate your watering, you can buy yourself an inexpensive timer. Measure the output of your water supply in gallons per minute, usually about two gallons per minute, and time your watering so that each bale gets roughly a gallon of water. As a relatively new straw bale gardener, this is my second year, I still tend to overwater. Not only does this leach nutrients out of the bales, but the bales will decompose too rapidly and are falling apart by the end of the first season. You can plant just about anything in a straw bale that you would plant in the ground. Remember that the bales will last a maximum of two years, so don't plant perennials such as asparagus or rhubarb. Also, tall plants like corn or sunflowers are not recommended. If you want to plant very small seeds such as lettuce or carrots, you should put some potting mix on the top of the bales first to plant the seeds into. Don't use garden soil as that would defeat one of the advantages of straw bale gardening, a weed-free, disease-free planting medium. Larger seeds like squash, beans, peas, or even onion sets can be poked right into the straw. Transplanting is easy. Just pull out a bit of straw and poke the plant in the hole.
Plants can be poked into the sides and ends of the bales also. Ideally, you want some kind of trellis system over your bales. Like any hot compost pile, if your straw bales are conditioned properly, they will produce heat. Once the bales have cooled sufficiently that they won't cook your seeds, you can get an early start on your frost sensitive plants. When frost is forecast, cover your bales with a row cover tucked into the baler twine on the sides of the bales. This is a great advantage in a short season garden. The trellis is also great for supporting your vining plants throughout the summer. For my second year straw bale garden, I opted for too long a row for my trellis to work, so I ended up using five gallon buckets around my plants until risk of frost was passed. Then I drove rebar through the bales into the ground below to support my indeterminate tomato plants. The system worked, but I think I'll go back to my old trellis system for next year. By the end of the season, your straw bales will probably have a hard time holding together. To get a second season out of your bales, fasten a frame around them or compress the remaining straw into totes to make a great, support, a great spot for planting root crops such as potatoes, carrots or beets. At the end of the second season, your straw bales will probably be totally decomposed and will make great compost or even, even potting soil for your third year. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and a comment, subscribe to my channel, and we'll see you in the next video.